Right, I need to be careful that I don't kick this wheelie thing that I've got my camera on. Fingers crossed, all right? So, hello everyone, and welcome back. Today is Sunday morning. It's cold, <laughs> and I'm in Salzburg in Austria. Right now, I'm in the middle of my Austria trip. I'm in the middle of filming a series of videos from here that will be coming up on this channel very soon. Uh, probably end of the month, early February, by the time I get to edit them. And then I'll be back in Belgrade uh, in a couple of days, actually, on Tuesday the 21st, I think it is, something like that. And today, I wanted to sit down, before I go out and film one of those videos, to do my January update. Yes! January update. If you are new to this channel, I just kicked the wheelie thing. If you're new to this channel, you'll know that I do, um, you know, predominantly travel videos, but also I do videos where I sit down once a month and just talk to the camera about digital nomad life or semi-nomad life, which we'll talk about in a minute. Traveling long term, teaching English online, those sorts of things, building an income, you know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get going. I've got four points to talk about. All right. So the big one, point number one, is about semi-nomad life. You might be interested, how am I finding it? You know, I have I was travelling full-time for three years and I've got to the point now where I just want to stop, but still travel in a way. So the difference between digital nomad life and semi-nomad life is that I'm not continuously travelling now. I have a base in Belgrade, which I'll come on to in a second, and I'm doing trips like this where I can go away for a week and purely film for a week and focus on those videos instead of what I was doing before where I'll be filming, teaching English, writing a book all in the same day and it would just get to the point where I couldn't really focus on one thing, you know. But now I'm finding that. So the first few weeks in Belgrade were brilliant because I could simply teach, teach, teach. Yes, I filmed a few videos, but those days where I filmed them, I could actually research and plan them, kind of, but egg with cheese, <laughs> and then edit them and get them up. And, and now I can come away to do a trip like this and just purely focus on YouTube. The number one word I want to highlight in relation to semi-nomad life is relaxation. I cannot emphasise that enough. If you are travelling full-time as a digital nomad and you're thinking, well, my life is just completely full, I'm working all the time, I don't have any time to do anything. That's how I was. Becoming a semi-nomad semi -nomad is the solution, at least it has been for me, because I feel like I can actually relax now and actually spend some time, you know, just lying in bed thinking without constantly having to do something. And the, the difference with travel is that previously I was constantly thinking about, you know, I need to book accommodation in this place. Where am I going to go next? Where am I going to go next month? And it was like a constant stream of research and thinking and planning. But now I don't really have that. And that time that I was doing that um, is now spent doing relaxation. Not yoga or anything, I don't mean like that, but like just spending time with myself. And that has been instrumental. You know, I think you've seen in previous videos, I am uh, I feel like much happier, you know. <laughs> I'm actually smiling in videos now. Uh, whereas when, when I was in Mexico or Japan or Malaysia, or wherever, it was, there was a stress level because I had so much to do. And yeah, I'm still working the same amount as I used to, but there's a difference in terms of relaxation. So um, it's really been a positive so far. I'm very happy. <laughs> the next thing is Belgrade. What do I think of Belgrade so far? Absolutely love it. I'm beyond happy there. I don't know what it is about Belgrade, but there's something, maybe it's going to take some more time to put my finger on it, but there's just something about it where I feel really comfortable there. People are fantastic, welcoming, friendly, as I said before. I feel like it's a home, and I know what you're going to say. I've said that about Mexico before in the past, but there's a difference because there are little things which make my life so much easier <laughs> than being in Mexico. Nothing against being in Mexico, but little stupid, trivial things like having a washing machine, you know, being able to hang my clothes up, um, little things like that, having central heating, hot water, hot showers, not having to go to a laundrette or wash my clothes in a shower with in a bucket. It, it's like those little tiny things have been astronomical and also food, you know, there's something about being back in Europe that makes me feel like I'm at home in terms of food because I can just go to a, a local convenience store or supermarket and buy the food that I would be used to buying in the UK. Sorry to say that, but it's true. It makes life a whole lot easier. You know, with Mexico, obviously, chorizo is my favourite, queso Oaxaca, top notch, but there is such a difference. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm from Europe, I'm used to those foods, and um, it just feels familiar to me. 
So with Belgrade, there will be a lot more videos coming from Belgrade in between these trips. I'm going to be in Belgr blah, 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 Belgrade until the beginning of April. Um, I have got some other trips planned over the next couple of months. Um, there are some awesome videos in the pipeline. That's the thing. I can research and plan them and make plans with people to do awesome videos. So I'm really excited to do them going forward. The third thing in this video is my ebook. Yes, I've been talking about that for a while. So if you don't know, I've written an ebook about teaching online. Yes, I teach English online four days a week as well as doing YouTube. It's actually going to be two ebooks now. So the first one is like a guide to becoming a teacher on you on YouTube on italki from the beginning. Um, the second one is lesson material. So for those teachers that have already um, become a teacher on italki and they just want some lesson material to get started with, it's not like a comprehensive list of everything because it, it's, you know, it, it will always be, there will always be much more that you can actually focus on. So it's not an exhaustive list. That's the word I'm looking for. The reason I'm doing two is because previously when I did videos a long time ago about teaching English online, the one with the lesser material has been the one that people have had most interest in. I've had so many emails wanting that information. So that's why I've put it in two, because, you know, if you're already a teacher on italki, you, you don't need to know how to get started on italki because you're already on there. So you need the lesser material. So I'm in the design phase at the moment. I've started it. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. It's um, it's really creative and, and interesting for me to do. I never thought I would be interested in that sort of thing. Um, hopefully, the plan is I'm going to have like a week in the middle of February to really just get that done, and I want to get the ebook ebooks finished by the end of February. That's the plan. So that'll be hopefully some passive income coming in um, once that's done. Awesome. Now the fourth thing I want to talk about is the flash forward video. <laughs> That's right. The first video of this year was a flash forward. So it started off in Belgrade and it flashed forward 12 months to London, 31st of December at the end of this year. What's that about? I hear you cry because I know YouTube, you know, a lot of people aren't particularly intelligent, not including you lot. Um, <laughs> and people just want to see videos of people just walking down the street. There's, there's no element of creativity in it. But I wanted to do that because I think when YouTube is particularly travel the travel youtubers do videos about um future plans they just sit down like this and talk about you know i'm gonna go to this place i'm gonna go to that place but they never actually go to that place and i've been guilty of that before i admit so i want to do something different oh my sister just added a new facebook photo great so i want to do something different and um kind of go into the future and look back and the, the point is that that's how i'm kind of planning my year so all of those places that i mentioned in that video are on the list for this year. And actually a lot of the things that have, I mentioned in that flash forward are already happening. Austria, I'm going to Sarajevo next month. That was another place I mentioned in that video. Um, the Cats, Whiskey and Cardi, if you didn't know who they are, they've been on Instagram. They haven't been in, in a video yet, but they will be, I'm sure. So yeah, it's a creative way of looking at future plans. Um, I hope everyone understood it. <laughs> Some people didn't, that's fine. They're like, oh, how did you go into the future? <laughs> have you got a DeLorean? I <laughs> had that. Oh, I know it's a joke, but it's hilarious. And overall, that video is going to be kind of a thing to refer to throughout the year. So certain things that I mentioned in that video, you'll see them come up later in the year. Hopefully, at least that's the plan. And you'll think, oh, you'll think back to the flash forward. I remember when he said that in London in the future. And the plan is to go to be in London again at the end of this year to kind of refilm that, if you know what I mean, which will be interesting just in terms of seeing the differences of what actually happened versus what I had planned. So that was the story behind that video. I just wanted to do something a bit creative and a bit more interesting than just sitting there talking like this video. Uh, <laughs> I'm off now to film another video in um, Salzburg. Um, there's probably there are probably going to be about five or six videos from Austria, which will be epic. They're more like a video series, so hence why I'm filming them all first, and then I'll edit them when I get back to Belgrade. Um, and there'll be a couple of videos that are kind of harking back. That's, that's a good um, phrasal verb. Harking back, is that a phrasal verb? Um, to the past, where I used to do like city basics videos and how to get around. There'll be a couple um, that won't have me in them, because I'm conscious that not everyone wants to see this mug all the time. Sometimes when you're planning a trip, you just want to see, you know, quick, succinct um, information, you know, how to get to this place, how to get to that place, boom, 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 15 things to do. And I, those videos I've done like that in the past have been most, most, some of my successful, most successful videos. So, um, we're going back to that. Brilliant. So, um, I hope you're having a wonderful January. Um, why am I speaking so quickly on a Sunday morning? I don't know. And, um, I'll see you next time, which, um, may be another video like this while I'm editing the Austria one. So, um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you soon.